Hello everyone and welcome to a new first taste on the channel where we're going to be checking out the game While True Learn. Now this game is currently in early access that you can purchase it on Steam for the very modest price of £5 convert into your local currency as necessary. Now While True Learn is, um, well, if the, if the uh, title gives away anything at all, it's basically a puzzle game with a programming sort of theme or specifically machine learning. Uh, artificial intelligence, machine learning, um, expert systems, that sort of thing. Now, this is of particular interest to me, obviously, based on my uh, academic uh, background, uh, which is a natural and artificial intelligence. So, as you can imagine, pretty I, I I do enjoy this game, though it is more puzzle game than than really anything else. You do learn a little bit about uh, artificial intelligence and machine learning and, and and how to construct or rather solve the sort of problems that you might be faced in in these kinds of fields, but it's not something that requires any deep academic knowledge to enjoy, which is probably for the better. Now we're going to be getting a new game straight away as it's always better to show than to describe. And we'll start with the tutorials. We will be, of course, AVAC. Welcome to our game, friend. This is a tycoon game that will give you an opportunity to take on the role of a machine learning specialist and evolve from a rookie to a professional. We hope that uh, you will, that, sorry, that our game will help you understand machine learning better. It's still in development at the moment, but we want to show the game to you already. This is developed by Luden.io. Now, I've had the, the game for a, a fair while. I actually picked it up um, some time ago when it first came out into early access and I, I played around with it a little bit. It has come along leaps and bounds since that, that first time I ever actually touched the game. Um, the UI is constantly being, being polished. The game itself is getting more and more added to it, but there are some things that aren't there yet. We will be seeing coming soon or, or locked coming soon a fair bit. Uh, but there's still a lot of game here, especially for the low, low price of five pounds. All right, Spanish school at cat.meow. What a fantastic domain. Avac at cat.meow. School problems. Good morning. We're running a big social survey in schools and we've encountered a problem. Our students often forget to mention their grade in the questionnaires. Can you divide pupils from junior and high school based on their test sheets? I'm sure we can. The conditions are we need to be 100% accurate. We've got 26 seconds to do it in. We will be given 500 cat bucks. I accept. Deep news. Non-neural artificial intelligence. Mankind has always been trying to create an artificial intelligence. Bef uh, before the invention of neural networks, people used expert systems. An expert, well, they actually use quite a lot of other things than expert systems as well. Um, an expert system is a deterministic algorithm which reproduces decisions of a real person. An example, this is Eliza, the very first chatbot in the world. It was created in 1966 and talked with patients using questions similar to real psychotherapists. It worked horribly because we're really complicated. Okay, an expert system is not built for something like us. It really isn't. This node compares colors. Uh, the expert system here. If the color of the element is equal to the chosen color, the element comes into the top socket. So input, output. Uh, others go to the bottom socket. In the real world, before the invention of self-learning algorithms, people used expert systems. These algorithms tried to use hard-coded comparisons similar to human expert decisions. It worked terribly. Well, that's not entirely true. Now, the, the, the thing with expert systems, and I, there's gonna, I'm going to be dropping little bits of information from uh, from my um, degree here and there. But uh, expert systems are like any other tool. You don't use a hammer to try and drive a screw into a piece of wood, unless you really, really want to and don't have a screwdriver. You can do it. It's not very efficient, though, and you're probably going to ruin the screw and all the wood. Likewise, you don't use a screw to try and drive a nail into a piece of wood. You can if you lack a hammer, but it's really not fit for purpose. And that's the thing with expert systems. Like the, the comparison with the lies are there. Not fit for purpose. Humans are fantastically complex, but with with a, a much uh, smaller scope or, or, or more uh, limited potential uh, for the problem, expert systems actually do quite well. They, they kind of work through a kind of deductive reasoning, if you will. And so they're very, very good at eliminating what the problem couldn't be. Whether or not they'll ever get, you know, limit the, the available outcomes down until they found out what the problem is yeah that, that's uh, that's up for debate but uh, one thing you'll find in the game it often drops little bits of things in here like uh, little youtube videos or, or links to other articles world wide web wiki stuff like that 
I think that's actually pretty, pretty cool. So we're going to drag our expert system across. Drag the socket using your mouse to make a connection appear. In order to bind the sockets to each other, connect them using your mouse. So we want red over there, everything else down here. Now there are three colors, red, green, and blue. There are also shapes, circles, squares, and triangles. Right now we're only dealing with squares and we're only dealing with two colors. So this is perfect for that. Click on test. The red will all go over here. It'll take one second for this node to process it, and then anything else will go down here. There's only one other thing it could be, so this will be perfectly accurate. Thankfully, we can speed time up, otherwise, oh my lord, this would be a very long game. Right, the estimated cost is 43 cat bucks for um, renting the server. Uh, time spent is 21.6 seconds. We used one out of one node, and we hit all of our targets. I accept the cost. There's no much I can do about it, unfortunately. If I want this thing to run, I've got to pay you. Ah, uh, alas. There we go. Next, project. Thank you. That's uh, not too bad. Right, so this is the task tree. But before we jump into any more of it, uh, see that one of those soons there? There's loads of things you can do. You've got Seabay, where we can spend our cat bucks. You can do things like buying new nodes. Uh, some of them are locked because they're not yet implemented. But other ones you can unlock to use in your your solutions, and they're actually quite useful. But they, they tend to be locked to a certain amount of progress. You can't use all nodes that you've unlocked everywhere. Uh, you can also buy various little things for your desk and, and just, you know, clothes, your hairstyles, your phone, your banhammer miniature, etc., etc. All very important things. You can also buy new cats and, and clothing for your cat. You can make them look like the Witcher if you want to. You can also buy new hardware, uh, a tambourine, because, you know, tambourines. But on the topic of cats, now, if you would like to. You can go down here. You don't have to pay anything for this. It's not like part of a DLC. It's just something the devs decided to include, which I thought was incredibly nice. You just put Ivac in there and you hit the arrow, boom, promo code. I've already activated it. But uh, that gives you a little arrow right here. Where have I gone? Oh no, it's like a chair recording. Oh, okay. But if you click that, boom, there you go. You get a little me avatar. How marvelous is that? It's got the beard and everything, the bean, the glasses. It's got a cup of coffee. I mean, uh, to be honest, when I'm coding, that is true sometimes. Unless it's particularly difficult code, and then I need this kind of zen-like state that only T can give me. And uh, the the avatar of my banner. Why why cat me has a tattoo of dragon me? On the, I, I don't know. It raises some very serious questions that I don't have answers to. Of course, the uh, my avatar as per my banner was done by the marvelous KMP. Links will be in the video description below. Uh, I'm sure you've seen lots of her art on my channel, in my videos. Uh, the links will take you to uh, the KMP comic, which she runs, and uh, her social media presence as well. If you're looking for art, I uh, would very, very highly recommend her. Uh, but moving on, we need to get more stuff done. So heading back to the tree. So we can't do this one. Don't know what it is. Applicants. Spanish school once again. Good day. You have coped with our previous tasks so well that we decided to entrust you with another one. Summer exams have passed here already, and the results are attached to the letter. Could you predict which of the students will be able to get into MIT? Um, sure, I guess. Uh, we'll get 550 cat bucks for this one. Once again, 100% accuracy, a little bit less time, though. Here you can see the requirements of successfully completing the task. Uh, that'll be over there. We can't quite see it at the moment, but uh, hopefully you can remember what they looked like. Um, but that's what the screen looks like. It tells us the, the shapes and color combinations that are acceptable, and these two bars. This one, here you can see the amount of data required in order to successfully complete the task, so it needs to have received at least that much data. And this is the accuracy, that being the threshold. So in this case, it would be like 50% accurate. You ought to distribute the data as accurately as possible while completing the task. At the same time, the quality of processing must be not lower than the required value there. The, the English in this does leave a little bit to be desired, but they are actively working on translations all the time. So you're going to get these little speed bumps with a game in early access. Right, so we need to sort a green and blue this time. Um, not too dissimilar to the last one. And so there we go, womp. Don't worry, we're in the tutorial, so it's gonna it's gonna be very gentle with us for now. You can see the scheme name down there, G B divide, green, blue divide. That will be important later. We know that this is gonna work, so let's just go ahead and release it straight away. You don't have to test everyone, though I do recommend testing them if you're at all uncertain that you're gonna be able to get it to work, because you know you don't want to have to shell out money for something that didn't work, and then you have to go back in and do it again, because this is costing you. So there we are, new project. Nice 
bit of cash there as well. I'm back. I'm back at my desk. Ah, relaxing. Good. Good, good, good. Uh, right. Let's have a look. So, errors in the database. Spanish school again. Errors in database. Hello. We have some errors in our questionnaires data. We can't solve the problem by ourselves. Can you please fix it? Uh, I think I can. Now we've got a range of cash this time. DLL. You will meet the different types of metals, uh, sorry, metals, not metals, on many levels, though I guess they, they kind of pertain to different metals. By switching between those metals, you will be able to see the additional conditions and restrictions imposed on the task. By completing the task for the first time on silver or gold, you will receive additional earnings. Do your best to receive the medal you wish to get right away, because even though you are able to recomplete the task and obtain a better medal, no financial bonus will be given to you in this case. So always go for gold if you can. If you can't, accept silver. If you can't do that, go for bronze. Now, typically bronze gives you very, very generous conditions compared to, to gold and silver, but if you can complete it on those two first, then you're going to get a little bit more money. In-game, this node destroys elements. In the real world, real data sets often have lots of errors. Filtering out errors is a very important skill for all data scientists. It is true. It is true. So, we've got all of the colors this time, red, green, and blue, but we don't want blue. Should be fairly easy. You can probably already see where we're going to go with this one. In fact, we're going to do this. I only want to filter out blue because that's the only, only one that I care about in this. Everything is acceptable except blue. So blue is the only one we need to filter. We know that this is going to work and we should be able to get this. We've got 29 seconds and only two node limit. If we wanted to go down to silver, we could use three nodes. We'd have 30 seconds or on bronze. We'd have 30 nodes or 32 seconds. So there's not much difference in seconds, but in nodes you can use, wow. So it's kind of brute forcing it with more, um, more components. But we'll test this one just to make sure it works. Since we are now getting into territory where uh, getting it right first time does matter. Are we going to get it right first time? We just got it right first time. But, you know, that's good enough. Let's get that done. Now you may be looking at this little train thing up there. That's for training your algorithms later on once we get to the more complicated nodes. Because right now we're just playing around with expert systems. It gets a lot more compli uh, complicated as we go. Errors in database two. And once again, Spanish School. Hello, it's us again. We found some new types of errors made by our users. Please update your program. It will be easier if you use the previous version of the code. Very well. You can change the current game speed. Uh, good. You can change it using the arrow, uh, AD or arrow keys and space. Uh, we don't need to. Now, when it said use earlier versions of the code, you'll notice up here we've got custom node limit. And yeah, only one for each one. So I can only ever use one custom node. That doesn't surprise me too much though. Custom nodes. You can use programs which you've constructed while completing previous tasks. Here, you can see all the schemes made of basic nodes recursively, which are allowed to be used for this task. Custom nodes don't waste time on transferring data from one node to another. Now that is an incredibly important thing to remember. That is absolutely, it's probably the most important thing about custom nodes, is within this block, even though, for example, uh, well, well I'll, I'll show you in a moment, but even though these nodes represent the, the game fields that we built them out of, which might have had data moving between two or even three nodes sometimes, they act as one node. So data goes in, data immediately comes out the other side. That is a big thing because data moving between nodes takes time, precious time, because we are timed. Right. At any time, you can get back to the previous task and rewrite the programs. For example, you may want to optimize them to better fit your current task. Click two times the right mouse button on the custom node to jump directly to the scheme. Data processing acceptance frequency. This icon displays how often does the custom node receive data from processing. As I said, the, the, the English is a, is a little bit um, clumsy sometimes, but it, it's quite obvious what it's being, uh, what they're trying to say. Um, in custom nodes, this icon displays, this one here, the total amount of processed elements at the current moment. Okay, so we've got a couple of things here, red or else. So if we wanted to, in this case, we only care about red, so we want a trash can and we want the red else divide. If we place that there, like so, then we can do that. Now, this is no different from using an expert system. In our case, no different at all. But if we wanted to, we could click on it and zoom right in. Now, 
the thing with this one is it is red or else because even though this one only has red and blue so you might have expected it to be red blue divide this would theoretically split any other thing so green would also be split down onto the bottom socket in this case so you know it's 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 worth bearing that in mind uh, do we have any other ones? Because oh, we've got uh, without blue, for example, which gives us um, red and green. Uh, I wonder. Can I go in there? Yeah. I mean, I could rewrite it and then save it if I wanted to. Huh. Could I? I wonder. For example, if I made this red and then linked it up there and then linked this over to the trash can, could I save that? And save it as a different name. Only red, for example. Let's try. Save. Scheme saved as only red. And let's head back out. Whoop, that's not quite what I wanted to do. Let's head in here. So I've changed that to only red now. So if I get rid of these, I just drop that in. That counts as two nodes because there's two nodes in there and it counts as one custom node but I could just do this now and that should work uh, actually let's just double test double check there we go seems fine red immediately passes through sure let's go ahead and release go and we'll see how well this does there we are it's processing reasonably fast we've got to get a couple more red through come on now there we go perfect not bad at all. Two seconds and uh, the time limit. There we go. Right, now we're on to optimization of the code. Hi, it's us again. We hope it's our last request. So do I. <laughs> We've changed our database system. Can you update your code one last time? We need it to work faster. Thanks. Okay. This icon displays the amount of time needed for a node to process one incoming element. In game, uh, the decision tree. This node compares socket colors with element colors and chooses the socket with the minimum amount of errors. If the element color is equal to only one socket's color, then the element moves to that socket. If element color satisfies both conditions or didn't satisfy any of them, then it moves to a random socket. In the real world, decision tree is one of the basic machine learning algorithms. Each tree knows a limited number of classes. When the decision tree gains an element, it asks the element some questions and chooses the class most similar to the element. There we are. So we only want red. Now you'll notice this is significantly faster, about one third as fast. Now we're gonna need three um, items here. If we want gold, then we can't use any custom nodes. Um, it, well, actually, no, I think uh, there is no limit on the custom nodes. When it isn't actually mentioned there, then there's no limit. But to get gold, we need to do this in 18 seconds. So using this one isn't going to happen because that's like 30 seconds right there. But uh, here we want to split on, well, let's say green. We don't care about green, so that one's easy. Red will move along. But what's happening with blue? Well, since blue is neither red nor is it green, it's going to go between, it'll basically randomly select it. So we can assume that five will go each way. So five have already been destroyed, but five have slipped through. Of the two colors that we'll get over here, only red and blue, red will go on and blue can be trashed. It'll be fairly simple, but let's test it anyway. There we go. Working as intended. And boom, that would be a success. There we are, let's go ahead. Don't show this next time. This actually requires renting servers. Yes, go ahead. It's fine. Now this one represents three um, servers. There we are, or rather three nodes. And it costs us 28 card bucks, but we got 1,080. That is quite a bit of money. All right, the task tree. The task tree displays your in-game progress. You'll be receiving different types of tasks. They will be marked with different colors and icons. Each icon corresponds to a certain type of task. As you get further in the game, more awesome stuff will start appearing in the game shop. Lines on the task tree show in which order the task will be unlocked. If you see a task which is locked at the moment, you can check its requirements by placing the cursor on it. Sometimes, in order to unlock a task, you will need to complete a certain group of tasks or se even several groups of tasks. By moving up the tree trunk, you'll be learning new machine learning algorithms. Don't be afraid to ignore side quests that you get. Um, you can get back to completing them whenever you want. 
But if some of the tasks seem too hard to tackle, you can train them inside tasks. This way you will be able to create more useful schemes which will help you complete harder quests and get enough funds to upgrade your equipment. That's actually a, a fairly a big part of it as well. But uh, I noticed we've got some private emails. The history of expert systems. 1965 can be considered a peculiar starting point for the work of the creation of expert systems. In that year, scientists from the Stanford Research Institute, Edward Bengenbaum and Bruce Bakanan, I, I never say that, Bakanan, Bakanan, I'm not sure, uh, teamed up with Nobel laureate Joshua Laderberg and began to create a computer system designed to determine the molecular structure of chemical compounds. And the next one, who invented the decision tree? A decision tree is a method, uh, is a method of, is one of the automatic data analysis methods. <laughs> uh, that is a bit of a clumsy one. The first idea of creating the decision trees date back to the works of Hovland and Hunt in the late, late 50s of the 20th century. However, the fundamental work that gave impetus to the development of this direction was the book Hunt, Marin and Stone Experiments in Induction, which was published in 1966. There's lots of little um, bits of info throughout the game, and I actually quite like that. You can't buy any hardware yet. Damn, Dratton Blast! Oh well. Uh, very well, let's go to the tree. Now, we have completed optimizations of the code. We could go to Medex, or Medx. But let's check out Illuminati Origins. Good day! I study ancient manuscripts and books in order to figure out the true story behind the Illuminati secret society. I need to recognize all the triangle shapes in these documents to solve the puzzle. Could you design a program that would do that for me? I'm sure we can. Uh, maybe I should write something that can notice your spelling mistakes, though. Right, 100% accurate, but we've got 65 seconds to do it. Between 770 and 1070 cat bucks. Okay. In game, sift. This block compares shapes. If the shape of the element matches the designed shape, uh, designated shape, sorry, the element goes into the top socket. The rest go to the bottom socket. So it's basically um, the decision tree, but for shapes. Sift, uh, sorry, the expert system, but for, for, for shapes. Sift, scale invariant feature transform, is one of the most powerful non-neural image recognition algorithms. Sift is very fast and is capable of recognizing simple objects and patterns. Okay, so all we want are triangles. Womp, and then everything else can go in the trash. Sorry, everything else. But it is the way it has to be. I'm very, very sad. There we go. We want 100% accuracy. So this is the only way to do it. It takes a very long time. We're not, we can't use... Well, I imagine we won't see any of our custom nodes down here, actually. Simply because... Well, come on now. Because we are not going to have sift in the end. We've got no nodes that only use trash can. So we won't see any of our others. Because they all have... Um, part uh, like uh, tools for solving the puzzle that shouldn't be used on this on this level, and effectively that's just the gamify part of it. Although it would make certain levels very very easy, and as someone who was working with experts, oh, well sorry, who was a machine learning uh, specialist, you'd use all of your array of methods to get a problem solved. Obviously, that kind of bypasses the puzzle element of the game, so. That's one you're just going to have to learn to accept. It is a little bit frustrating because sometimes you're like, ah, but if I only had this, I'd be able to easily solve this problem. It's like, well, but you don't. So you're just going to have to move on with that. Right, unfortunately, we have to sit here now and watch it go through the whole thing again. Alas. Uh, I don't believe it. it's random. Uh, though that being said, I haven't really paid uh, close enough attention to note whether the, the way these come out is seeded or is actual random i don't know but uh either way money spent 107 cat bucks but we'll get a decent bit back uh there we go now soon we can go oh alphabet recognition as it happens but i noticed seabay i can buy some more things haha i can buy hardware i can buy many hardwares okay i can buy one megabyte of ram oh my lord we're living in the future increase sockets processing queue by three uh there we go uh, hide it? No, I want to. Is it in my room? Where is it? Ah, there it is. It's in my room. That's fantastic. Uh, next up, I would like a tambourine. Increase data transfer speed by one. Tambourine. And a rentium. Increase node network speed by 1% and increase data transfer speed by 1%. Ha 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 ha. Ah, so good. Uh oh.
I have angered the gods. I apologize. Right, moving on. Oh, we've got Stardust. Now, that's another part of the game where you can make a bit of cash that way. A letter from mum and dad. Okay. A letter from mum and dad. Hello, dear. You remember how you cherish your financial independence, but come on. Your birthday is just around the corner. Be a good kid and take this money and buy yourself something nice, will you? We love you very, very much and we miss you. P.S. Do not forget to put a hat on. It's very cold outside. That does actually sound like my parents. Right. Okay. Tatari. Geeks. Read. Tatari. Good day. We are invent uh, inviting you to join our hacker startup. We write cheats and guides for different games. But we would like to create something very cool now. We need a program that will play and win in Arkanoid instead of the player. We know that you know a lot about machine learning. So we're inviting you to participate in our startup. Now, startups... Unlike the missions where you just do the mission, you get paid. Startups, you're investing your money. We can put our own money in it. Uh, it's one cat buck per share. We can buy 1,200 shares in the, uh, in the company. And then we write the code. If we write bad code, don't do particularly well, then we might not find that we make much money. In fact, you can make a loss. You can straight up lose money on startups if you're not up to the task. So, you know... Depending on how much, how confident you are, you might want to put less money in and that's limit your losses. Or you might want to just go all in and have to succeed. You know, necessity will, 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 will drive you forward. We're going to join this startup. Uh, you're about to invest at some blah, 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 in the startup. Are you sure you want to do that? That's how I, I imagine the, uh, the computer would, would state that error. If it was actually text-to-speech, we can kind of think of like a HAL 2000 sort of thing, or 9900, HAL 900, 9000, I, oh my lord, it's been that long since I've, I've read Space Odyssey 2001, I can't remember. Damn it, memes, there's so many things, is it 9000, is it HAL 9000, is it HAL 900, is it HAL 9001, is it HAL over 9000, I don't know, oh, I, I'm gonna have to go and Dig that book off my bookcase now. But nevertheless, I digress. Let's move on. <laughs> the scheme created while working for a startup does not differ from any other scheme, but it can work better or worse. Your profit depends on the quality of the scheme. Continue. In startups, when you press release, your scheme starts to work automatically. Don't worry. You can get back to the scheme and change it at any time. So you can come back and work on it later. If your scheme contains self-learning nodes, you can disable learning in test run. Now, we don't have self-learning nodes yet. All we have to do is junk the green and preserve only the red and the blue. Now, and you'll notice that our systems are running a little bit better. Uh, okay, well, I want a system that only keeps red and blue. Do I have one that is at all like that? Uh, only red fast, only red, only red, green, blue, divide. Um... Let's have a look at green blue divide. Nah, it only only does that, unfortunately. Uh, okay, that's not quite what we need. Let's go back then. Have we got our else red else divide? No, not quite what we need. Hmm. Only red. All right. Um, let's have a look at you. See, that is quite funny, because it uses the only red one there, but speeds it up. I... That, that's, that's just crazy. Um, we can also build our own ones if we want. Now, ultimately what we want to do here, speed is going to be important, but... Let's just uh, roll with it like this for now. I'm going to put a trash can here. Now, we're going to need two. Two tiers of the decisions. Red will go up here, blue will go down here. But in this case, each one will get half of the green. So at that point, we want to just isolate it further. So the green can go up there. Oh, I wanted blue there. So green goes into the trash can. The UI is a little bit finicky sometimes. Red across, blue across. We test it. We should see. There's no specific time limit on this. We've got up to 50 nodes that we can use. And you can pretty much use any nodes for your startups. But that does what we needed to do. So I'm going to go ahead and release this. Release. Uh, from this moment, the startup will work automatically. Indeed. Right. So the money histogram 
will show the dynamics of your weekly income. The number indicates the income received during current week. The red column states that users bought, brought you less money than you spent on the service that day. This histogram shows the dynamics of users taking part in the startup. The number indicates the amount of active users at the moment. If the number of users exceeds the bandwidth capability of your current scheme, it results in overload growth. This histogram shows the overload dynamics. The number indicates the current overload. If this parameter gets too high, try optimizing your scheme. Here, you can see the amount of money the company has. If it runs out of money, the company will cease to exist, obviously. You can leave the startup and sell your shares anytime, and you can see how much it's worth in this table. Launching a successful startup or completing a task requires one day. In the end of the week, every startup provides you your share of income. Okay, so currently we've got 100 users. We've not made anything because it hasn't had a day to pass yet. Okay, that's fine so far. Right, so we could do a little bit of work on these. We particularly want to do a um, chicken escape farm. Hi there, my name is Sarah. I own a small technology farm. We're improving our processes using the latest technologies. Shops we are working with need supplies of eggs of different kinds, and it takes a lot of time to sort them manually. That's why we've decided to automate the process. We have all the necessary characteristics used to calculate egg parameters, but we need an algorithm which will work without any human assistance with high accuracy. So 100% accuracy, 55 seconds, and a lot of money available here. Okay, so... We just need to break them down into basically whatever they are. Um, all right, this shouldn't be too bad. Uh, there we are. We'll have another sift straight after that with that one. And then whatever else is left has to be a triangle. Let's test it. There we are. I can't imagine that we would be able to do this any better because we're using the correct number of nodes, but uh, possible that time would be the issue here. Are we going to do it? <gasps> we didn't. Hmm. Okay. Now then, why was that? Why, why, why? Now, I can see that we're currently passing triangles on. Hmm. Well, you can sometimes shave a little bit of time off by just changing the way things work. So let's do this instead and see how that works. Creating a nice little woven pattern there. This may be all that we need to do to, uh, to get that. We'll see though. It might not be possible with what we've got. And if that's the case, then maybe making a DLL will be the answer. No, we did it that time. So sometimes it... The order that they feed things to you can make a difference. But there we go. We should be able to release it with that. There we go. So this is the circle, square, triangle, sift. Nice. Seems like it'll be a fairly simple one. Come on, triangle. Pachoo. There we go. Just in the nick of time. Hooray. Well, I guess we could go and check on Medex. But no, let's, uh, let's continue on. Alphabet recognition system. Good morning, Tov uh, Tovarish. We know that someone from the USA created a system which can recognize the alphabet. You must create a copy of that system for the KGB. The handwriting of the USA spies is awful. <laughs> okay. Um, we'll get 1,200. There is no... There doesn't seem to be any kind of variance here, so I wonder if there's actually going to be a uh, any medals. We've got 40% accuracy. It's very uh, forgiving. Deep news. Rosenblatt's Perceptron. First Perceptron, machine neuron, was invented by Fra uh, Frank Rosenblatt in 1957. Frank created Mark I in 1960. Mark I is, this, is a Perceptron machine that can recognize English letters by their shapes. This icon displays the chance of incorrect data recognition, which Node makes during the processing. In test runs, Perceptron reduces the amount of errors while trying to predict the shapes of elements. In deploy run, Perceptron only predicts shapes. Now, what it means by that is that whilst in test, it learns. This is one of the first learning algorithms we've got. Rosenblatt's Perceptron used uh, in Mark 1. This Perceptron could recognize only simple linear dependencies, but it was enough to recognize English letters. And uh, if you're wondering about this pattern in the background, that's uh, basically what one might use to visualize a, a neural network. Um, watch how it works, learn how it works, and learn this. Quite a few links there. 
Now, mark one, perceptron. Womp. And we'll, uh, circles, squares, triangles. Now, we've got a low degree of accuracy necessary. Now, we want to train this perceptron. It's going to start at 75, but every time it does something, basically, you can imagine that it's getting feedback. In this case, it's not getting feedback, so how's it learning? Well, who knows? But in the real world, you would be feeding back whether the decision it made was correct or not, and then it would then process that in some way and learn from it. Uh, how exactly the Mark 1 Perceptron worked, I have no idea. Um, I do actually have a book on it, but um, or it, it's in one of the books. But uh, in Neural Net, you'd be feeding back constant... Um, feedback of the results or its fitness within any particular test and they would then use that to change the weights between uh, the, the the nodes in it in the network and over time would get better uh, so there we are it, it'll work fine it, this is basically just an introduction to the perceptron node so it's not a particularly difficult one it just wants to show us how it works really there we go so it got to 24% and we released it. We could have trained it a little bit further if we really wanted to. There we are, we might do in the future. Now we can go to dairy products manufacturing. Now this one down here, a real reinforcement learning. Now, from what I could see, this one is much more of a beta, um, a beta mission. And so we're gonna skip it for now. But there are different things being added. In fact, well, yeah, sure, we'll, we'll, we'll show it out. A real reinforcement learning zero. In this task, you will encounter reinforcement learning. Here, you have to teach the car to correctly behave on the road. At first look, the task seems strange, but it's worth to wrap one's head around. This game mode is now in the open beta testing. So if you encounter any problems or have any suggestions, feel free to contact us via Discord. So, uh, breaking the fourth wall there, but... Nodes mechanic differs from the usual one in the tasks with reinforcement learning. All data is initially unknown, and your task is to recognize it and transmit it to the machine learning model. Nodes distinguish one or more types of data and also process them in different ways. Type correlation and quality of the data that will be received by the model of the machine are what its learning process and data processing results are depending on. Some types of data are complex, and simple nodes cannot accurately recognize what they are but are able to refer them to a generalized group. To determine the exact classes, you will need to use more complex nodes. Remember that it's not always advantageous to recognize objects in as much detail as possible. For example, if you are making a self-driving car, does it really need to know the difference between a car, a truck, and a motorbike? No, not really. It should be avoiding all of them, generally speaking. Maybe, maybe you'd have different kinds of behaviors in some kind of prediction, like it, it might be predicting a massive lorry is gonna break slide a little bit more than, than a nimble car. Uh, motorbike's going to have a, a much higher uh, acceleration because it's a lot lighter versus the, the, the output from its engine. Uh, things like that, which, you know, they might be useful to the, the car's AI if you're going to be thinking, you know, in ways that the, that the data would make sense. But by and large, if you're just trying to avoid something, you don't need to know what it is. You just need to know that it is a thing to be avoided. Um, continue. This one, it's a lot different. Like Sift here does different things. We hook it up to the AI in there and then we tune the AI. I'm not going to go into the depth of this because it is still very beta, but here we'll be training and testing the machine learning system that receives the data from the previous screen. Um, here you can see the training test and release runs. Train your car, test it and release it. You can drive the race yourself and then it learns from the way that you react to stuff. Driving the car, you can see how the AI controls the movement of the car, blah, blah, blah. We're not going to do this right now, but I just thought I'd, I'd show that there are different things that you can do in the game or that will be expanded on as time goes on. We are making some money. Hooray! Users are up. Uh, we've got back to... We're going to skip that one, though. So uh, let's go to the tree and continue on. Text recognition. We are aware that you were able to create the text recognition system based on the Rosenblatt Perceptron. We need a similar system that would also be able to distinguish vowels from consonants. This task is simpler, but more accuracy is required. Only a little bit more accuracy, mind you. Okay, so... Uh, circles, no circles, triangles, triangles, squares, squares. Alright, fairly easy one, this. Uh, squares and triangles would go down here. Circles have to go up there. Now, 
based on the number of things, I'm going to say triangles go down here because triangles need more. Uh, the, the bottom one needs not quite um, double, but, you know, not that far off either. Um, so if we just send only circles up top and squares and triangles down the bottom, then we should be okay, I would think. Uh, now, that being said, if we pop that in there, I can quickly go into the perceptron over here. Let's uh, train it up a little bit more. Let's just make it as best as it can. I think 20% is about as accurate as it's ever going to be. Let's uh, save that. Though I think you can improve that later as you, uh, in the same way that we can improve the overall running speed, like with better hardware or something like that. Now we're going to grab this and draw it over. There we are. And that's all we need. So circles up there and everything else down to the bottom. And train. You don't actually need to train it specifically, but... There we are. Hopefully it's going to be okay. Uh, ooh, not actually sure. No, we, we should be fine. We've got 10 seconds. Come on. Don't don't let me down. Oh, fuck. He's getting close there. Damn. But there we are. So, Perceptron Sorter number two. Not exactly the right one, but uh, I, I guess. I guess I could re change the name of the scheme as well to Circles slash ST uh, Perceptron. Uh, in fact, I think that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to uh, go back in here for a second and change this one to... Instead of Perceptron, Slaughter... Cir <laughs> slaughter? Circle slash Square Triangle Perceptron. Just so I know a little bit better what that one is when I'm looking at it in the future. Right, tree. So, moving on. We can't do that one. Parallel Calculations. Parallel calculations. Hello, we represent a scientific center. Our current programs are underperforming. Can you parallelize our calculations? I'm sure we can. Deep news. In 1969, Seymour uh, uh, Papert and Marvin Lee Minsky wrote a book called Perceptrons. In this book, they talk about math constraints of the first perceptrons, the XOR problem. This book has shifted the scientific interest and funds distribution from the U.S. government organization, slowing down the progress of machine learning for almost 30 years. That's not the only thing that happened to cause a massive slowdown. There have been a few things, but uh, it certainly contributed to it. The expanded version of the book was released in 1987, containing the chapters that disproved the statements from the critical remarks made since 1969. Um, and there's all sorts of paradigm shifts, some that kind of, it looked like this was the right way to go to further the, the discipline, and it ended up in a dead end, so they kind of had to work backwards and then take the other, you know, shift the paradigm across to a different kind of uh, system. And that's, that kind of peppers most, most scientific disciplines, honestly. Um, oil scheme used a service to process data. Some of the nodes require additional servers. The more service you use, the more expensive your schemes cost. In game, this block routes elements to the latest over, uh, least overloaded socket. Warning: This block requires additional server costs. In the real world, a load balancer is a device that distributes network or applications traffic across a cluster of servers. Load balancing improves responsiveness and increases the availability of applications. Indeed, it does. So, pretty simple. This one, we just pump one down there, clonk, clonk, clonk. So we're now using two servers instead of one. Test run, it'll just dump them in and straight out the other side. Super simple. But as, as I was kind of touching on earlier, we've got this now, and you can probably think of all sorts of ways that that would be applicable to our earlier uh, missions. Yeah, no, most of them won't allow it. Most of them are like, no, 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 no. You, you don't get to use that here. That makes it too easy. Ah, the scallywags. But we can buy more things in Seabay. Hooray! We can buy... One megabyte of RAM, increasing socket processing queues by three. Uh, oh, no, no, sorry, that's hiding room. Oh, ah, uh, right, yes, of course, because I'm, I'm hiding it from the side. Yes, 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 yes. We can get the Cerberus 2000, decreases server cost by 3%. Useful. And 256 megabytes of RAM, increases socket processing queue by five. My lord. Right, okay, so that is all bought. Uh, locked, coming soon. We can't get the three com network card, alas. Much sadness there. How's our startup doing? Uh, it's okay, it's not doing too bad at all. Uh, right, so the next up, a large parallel calculations. Hey, our parallelization system broke after the last Doors OS upgrade. Oh, bloody Doors! <sighs> Can you fix it? It's a very big system. 
Be careful. I know, I know. Uh, doors keeps updating for me as well. Breaks all sorts of things. Really causes me problems with my recording software. Right, there we go. Let's get them all moved out. And so this isn't just going to give us a four parallel. We don't need to test it. We know what's going to happen. But this can shunt quite a lot of data. There we are. But that costs an awful lot of money. <laughs> so much money. Right, final results. There we are. It costs us 92 cat bucks to rent the server time for that, even though it only ran for 7.9 seconds. But we got a fairly big payout, so that's not too bad. Dictatorship? Hmm, not so sure about this one, but okay. <coughs> okay, best dictator in the world. Oh, oh, that's fine then. Greetings! This is the only state internet provider of a small country. We have a rather suboptimal code to track our people's activities. I blame Penultimo myself. Unfortunately, we cannot allow you to change the actual code, but we have several new servers purchased on a garage sale. Parallel the calculations, this will help our tyranny to prosper. Very well, El Presidente. Catub. These are the four Catub repositories. They allow you to store previously made schemes for one task and switch between them right in the middle of the game. How marvelous. You can choose a version of the scheme which will be used as a custom node. Ah, right, so you could go back. As I changed one of my previous solutions, I could use the cat hubs instead to kind of just store those previous solutions and just change them as I, as I need to flick things around. You can copy and paste the nodes by selecting the necessary ones on the game screen using the hotkeys or mouse. Marvellous. Right, well, we only really want only red right there. But we kind of need it to be fast. So, um, you got to process quite a lot of data um, and only red it's kind of bad at its job uh, well what have we got to play with yeah it's just the expert systems okay so only red let's see if we can get away with just two of them to start with so only red like that they don't require any servers but we are in fact going to be using two parallel right here so womp womp Womp. Not particularly any real reason to use two parallel there instead of the uh, regular one because there's no nothing moving around inside this, as you can see. However, four parallel is better than just recreating that because uh, oops, let me go back rather. No, I'll keep going back. There we go. Um, four parallel does have motion in between nodes, so this one would be faster to just use that. But let's see how this runs first. Is it going to be fast enough? I do not have any particular faith that it will be. Nope. We're going to need... Oh, no. Just made it. All right. Well, that keeps our costs down. It's only 3.88 cat bucks per second. Not bad at all. We could have used more notes, but we don't need to. Hooray us. Release. El Presidente will be so pleased. I believe it's penultimo, though. He will almost certainly steal the credit for this. <sighs> but it's hard not to forgive him. He is penultimo, after all. Uh, there we are. That was actually quite a lot of money there. Excellent. Now, how's my startup doing? Startup's doing reasonably good. We can buy some more things in Seabay. Let's find out what else we can buy. We can buy the Gvidia 250. Increases node work speed by 3%. Also, a 30 gigabyte hard drive. Provides an extra DLL slot. Marvellous. And Kel servers 3,500. Decreases server cost by 3%. Marvellous. Oh, and TB Gink Router. Increases data transfer speed by 5% as well. Can I get any others? Can I get more stuff? No, I'm kidding. Uh, hide purchased items. Also hide locked items. I only want to see things I can buy. Please and thank you. Can I buy anything over here? I can. Why haven't you been telling me that I can buy things? <sighs> you scoundrel. Um, I choose to buy, uh, 40, I read, I mean, I'd like, but I can't. Okay, I will buy cactus. I will also buy an aloe. There we are. Uh, do I, do I not have cacti and aloe? Oh, man. I'm, I'm disappointed. Oh, well. All right, it's current task. Let's try a prediction of president elections. Uh, Yahoo Scorp. 
Prediction of President Elections. Good morning. We're contacting you on behalf of Yaus Corp. The president of our partner venture has been dismissed last month and the board of directors is in the process of electing a new one. We need to be able to predict who will win the election so we could make a decision about the future of our partnership with said venture. Make it happen and you will get a handsome reward. That is actually quite a lot of money. Accept job. Okay, uh, hmm. I, I mean, seems like a fairly easy one actually. Like super easy. Only red fast. Uh, is that the right one? Let's have a look. Uh, well, no, not actually, but uh, let's go back. Oops, not quite what I wanted to do. Uh, okay, well, we use the decision tree. Ah, that's why we've only got this one. We don't have the... Um, the availability of the expert systems anymore. That's fine, though. So we'll just do two of these and see if that will work. We might need to do it a little bit faster. It's 10 seconds we've got to play with this, but they're very, very quick to process stuff. So we'll see. Test run. Come on. No, we've, we've, oh, we've got too many servers already. Ah, three of two. Right. Can't have that. Okay. That will work. My bad. There we are. Oh, come on. There we go. Now test run. See how this works. Can we get enough data? We can. Hooray! Not too bad then. There we go. Nice and solved. There we are. And have we have we actually Yes! Fantastic! Startup has paid us out. The cat cloud costs nine hundred and fifty-two. And we got 1,234. Um, so we only made like 280. Eh, it's okay. This track shows the startup's weekly profit statistics. This is the amount that we earned. This is the amount we spent. This is the amount of profit we actually made. That's fine. It's fine. I'm, I'm okay with it. Though uh, users are slowly dropping. It's not so good. Not so good. Perhaps, perhaps we can patch it. Perhaps we can make it better. Hmm. I wonder. I mean, it's still more or less the same thing. Uh, I don't think we could make it any better. We don't want any inaccuracies. Maybe if we had something like a perceptron for colors, but alas. But that still would have some inaccuracies. No, I don't think we can make uh, Tatari any better. But I think that's where we're going to be wrapping up this first taste. I hope that I have given you a bit of insight into the game and uh, allowed you to work out if it is for you or not. I have quite a lot of fun with it. I'm probably going to continue playing it, if I'm perfectly honest. But there is still a lot of stuff to be added to the game. Again, this is very much a uh, early access title. There's a lot of game here, though, to give you an idea of how far up all of the puzzles go. We're still going all the way up to there. And there's plenty of room for you to just optimize things and just um, tweak the, the puzzles that you've already solved just to make them a little bit better. For no one else but yourself, really. And of course, you know, your cat who's sat there judging you while it's drinking its, its coffee with its, its little beard and braids. Oh, my Lord. Uh, the, the, the days the days where my cat has got a braided beard. It, it, it's definitely posing questions that I'm not certain I want answered. But that's going to be it from me. I really do hope you've enjoyed this. And do let me know what you thought about the game in the comments down below and I will see you next time. But until then and as always, do take care everyone.